what's up dragon brood today we're going back giving you the easiest way to rank up right now with mono white aggro because it doesn't require really fancy upgrades and it's still good against a lot of things and there's some choices you may not have considered to play in this list that are going to make a big difference so strap yourselves in there's going to be a lot of quick action if you know what i mean and get your head out of the gutter All right, as always, you know I gotta ask, if you're gonna get anything to protect your nerd gear, go check out shop.ultrapro.com. Great people there, and they have been in business, by the way, they're reliable, they've been around for 70 years. So if you're gonna trust anybody, go trust them to protect your stuff for the long term. All right, starting at the top, these are gonna be cards you mostly know, and we'll stop and talk about a couple of them. But right here at the top, we've got Hopeful Initiate. We're playing three of these alongside three hotshot mechanics. Mostly because the initiative's not always great, but we do actually need Hotshot Mechanic to be what it is because we do have a vehicle we're going to talk about here in a second. We're playing a full set of Intrepid Adversary because, well, the card's just good and you're playing Mono White and it gives you something to do with your mana late. So we love all those things. Luminarch Aspirant, there's not a lot to talk about at this point. If you're playing White, you're playing Aggro, you're going to play four copies. It's good. Sun Gold Sentinel. This is one I do want to stop on and talk about. Uh, there's a few reasons we want this in the list, right? It helps you from stalling out because you can make it to where it's unblockable. It removes cards from the graveyard. So cards like Blood on the Snow become less problematic. You know, so that's actually really good. Stuff like Leer becomes less problematic. So we do like having this in here for a few different things. But it being three power is also going to matter here in a second when we talk about a vehicle in the list. Now, we're playing two copies of Thalia, Guardian, and Thraben, but I will say it's possible you want to play a third Thalia. And it's going to be easy to make that decision based on the next card, and we're talking about Reckoner Bankbuster. If you don't have four Bankbusters, maybe don't craft four of them. Just craft three, and then make an additional Thalia, which you probably already own if you've been playing this deck from the last season or two. So... Consider that, but I will say one of the things that's good about the Bank Buster is that it actually does allow you a play post sweeper. And because you have things that you can crew with very easily as you play them, there's a lot of times you can play this and not even lose tempo and still be attacking with a 4 4, which is pretty spectacular, or possibly more if you have uh, an adversary pumped up, right? But in a pinch, if it's not worth it to attack, or maybe they just swept the board, okay, cool. During their end step, you go ahead and draw a card right, and set yourself up to do something the following turn. So this card's going to end up being better than you think. Also, it doesn't have a color, so it's resistant to Vanishing Verse, which is in a lot of the black-white decks. So, random, but it's a thing that may come up, so keep that in mind. At a line, we're playing three, just because it's a good card. Also plays well with the Bank Buster, because you can attack, and then you can also use it on defense, since it has Vigilance. So, good stuff all around with this one. We're playing three Brutal Cathars because just, you know, we got to have these exile creatures there in every white aggro deck, no surprise. Playing a full set of four Elite Spellbinders, partly because the flying is actually super important right now. There's not that many flyers outside of, like, you kind of still run into Goldspan Dragons. But outside of that, this is actually pretty good. And when you're trying to get, you know, you get in these weird ground stalls where you can't punch past, like, the green-white uh, enchantment decks or something... Having a three, four, five power thing coming over the top is actually really, really big. So, really like that. And this slows down those sweepers, the blood on the snows, the doom scars, whatever, right? So, you want to go ahead and play these. And it's funny because this is a card that, like, we went from you definitely play it to, eh, it's not that good to now, eh, you really want to play it, right? And that's just kind of how magic goes sometimes. Playing a couple copies of Skyclave Apparition. Uh, maybe you want to flip-flop the number of Brutal Cathars and other apparitions. Like, I would totally get that if somebody wanted to do it. I like this because Cathars do still get rid of tokens, and we do have a few things making token creatures still. But sometimes apparition can get rid of things that the Cathar can't. And we don't have a ton of removal, so you got to have to use these judiciously. Don't just throw them out there. And then we've got two Wandering Emperor because again, we want to make sure we're not totally susceptible to the sweepers. We don't want to be totally susceptible to the meat hook massacres. This gives you a good combat trick to put a plus one on something and give it first strike. If, especially if you're blocking, but you can make another 2-2. Two -two. You can use it to surprise crew a bank buster. Like, there's a bunch of things you can do with this in the list. And it is a removal card, right? If they're attacking with their big monsters thing, 
Maybe they pumped up a Kami of Transients you can't kill. Well, you flash this in and just kill it, gain two life, and then now you're off to the races on the next turn on your side. So this card's very flexible. It's arguable you could play more, but, you know, if you're on a budget, two is probably all you're going to be able to squeeze in there. Then on the lands, we've got three Cave of the Frost Dragon, two Igonjo, 18 planes. So if you're looking to upgrade this based on what you played the last season, or the season before, I guess, really just looking at two Igonjo, two Wandering Emperor, and three or four Bank Buster. I think you could get by with three if you wanted to play an extra Thalia, and that might actually be the way to go. So realistically, you're looking at seven rares or mythics you have to spend to upgrade to this, which actually is not bad at all. So if that's the only upgrade you need to play this in this season, I think you're going to be doing pretty well. But that being said, let's go play some games, find out how good this deck is with these upgrades, and then at the end of the video, we'll talk about how we feel about those upgrades, any changes we would make, and I'll have a card spotlight for you. So please watch the other side of the video because that helps me out so very much, and then we'll see you on the other side. We're keeping this one. I just hate that we have four lands in our opener. That just doesn't feel awesome. But I think the plan here is probably just open with Thalia into Aspirant, unless they play something super big we feel we need to get rid of with this. But I doubt that's going to be the case, especially against Blue Black. We are totally okay running this out first. Now, the downside, well, I guess we'll be able to make Thalia at least a 2-2. Two -two. So that makes a difference. And we'll go ahead and play that. Mostly because if Thalia survives here... I mean, I guess Thalia doesn't need to survive. We'll just put the counter on the Aspirant and then attack with those and then get the Initiate up to a 3 toughness at a minimum. And that'd be pretty big. But let's see what the opponent does here. Because like I said, killing Thalia might be a priority for them. Matter of fact, I would... Oh, no! That's not the card we want for this matchup at all. That sucks. All right, well, tis what it is. Oh, what? Okay, Baleful Mastery, give us a card. Well, I guess the plus side. All right, what can you do here? If you play a land, you can Meat Hook for two, get rid of that. Play this, get rid of another one. We need five lands for this, so that doesn't do anything. You know what? Opponent's at 13, this would be 14. Let's see, so 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. This would let us get three to two. All right, I'm willing to run one of these out here. They can meet hook for two here. They got it, they got it. I mean, we can't not do stuff here, right? Now they could just play, uh, yeah, that's fine. We knew, we knew that was a possibility, so we weren't too worried about it. We'll go ahead and get rid of that meat hook. Now the only downside here is they would be gaining a creature if they kill our stuff here. But we're going to try to attack with the Cave of the Frost Dragon, I guess, next turn. Because we drew so many lands. As the aggro player, you do not want to be... Uh, well, we will definitely discard a card. You don't want to be in the situation where you have as many lands as the, uh, the opponent. That's usually bad for business. Uh, all right. Well, I mean, let's do it. Now, in a pinch, do we want to discard a card here? Yeah, I guess we just discard. If they if they got it, they got it. I mean, like, I can't see what we're going to do otherwise. Like, oh, that's a good sign for us. That's a damn good sign for us. I don't even know if they can have anything here. Like, they'd have to have, like, double fading hope, maybe? Well, not true, because they can Fading Hope this and get a 2-2 back to block and then only take three. So a Fading Hope is actually, or I guess even a Spot Kill card. You can just use that to kill the Apparition. So there's outs they can get here. I mean, it's not great for them, but there are realistic outs here. So we can't take anything for granted. Uh, Yeah, we're going to go for it. I mean, if you've got two removal cards... I mean, you you do, you do. But I assume it's kill the apparition, get a block, go to two. At least I would think that's the play for them. Because nothing else makes sense here. 
Yeah, exactly. Okay. Opponent goes to two. Uh, we're just going to play this. And the reason is, like, now we can get a land, and we'd be able to exile that, since it's an enchantment creature, and still be able to attack for three with our land, if we, if we get another land. Like, lots of ifs here. All right, opponent is searching. They're digging. All right. Whew. If we can draw another land, this actually feels all right. I mean, we could still be susceptible to a lot of things. I feel like I've played against Mr. Biggs before. I am, you know, I feel like there's players I run into that kind of, I don't know, I guess the best way to describe it is like they sort of stay at your same level and you end up seeing them each season when it resets. Like almost like we have the similar schedule and play the similar number of games, which is kind of funny. I don't know if like that's the same for everybody else, but definitely something comes up for me for sure. All right, well, Dahlia, you up. I think the plan here is Spellbinder. This could be a uh, Blood Chief's Thirst on Althalia here. Nope, not at all. I think I'm going to go with this. Ooh. Alright, I guess we get that. Alright, opponent goes 14. They're light on mana, so I guess... Actually, I guess I could have left them with that, because they really didn't have land, did they? They would have had to draw one. And they wouldn't even have been able to cast it. So, that was probably a little bit of a mistake, but it's fine. I mean, we have another Spellbinder, if we want to go with that. We can just remove that and attack for three, four, five, six, seven. Um, if we attack for seven, opponent goes to seven. If we get a land and do that, would that be lethal? Looks like it would be. So we kind of got to go for it based on what we know about the opponent's hand here. All right. I mean, we've got lethal even if we don't play the adversary here. And we can get plus one in the air if we want it with the aspirant. So meat hook for one is actually still pretty powerful here for them. That is not a meat hook for one, however. It does get them a 1-1 one, one blocker. But uh, we did draw the land, so that should do it. And we'll pay. And we'll attack. Yep, so that was pretty systematic. All right, well, there you go. Uh, yeah, we'll keep this. This seems more than reasonable. I mean, a third and a fourth lane obviously is really nice, but uh, not bad to have this on the play. I mean, if we're staring at a meat hook, it's a little bit scary, but, you know, we'll make do. All right. Let's see where this goes. I think next turn, we're going to attack first. Oh, the opponent doesn't even have anything there. Huh. All right. No counter either? What is this hand? Oh my gosh. All right. Well, you can't cast anything else. I mean, you could cycle that to get to four. All right. Sure. That's the only thing that's really threatening here. And they didn't even cycle that. Weird. That's going to cost you four mana, five mana. Not sure what they would have just drawn, but here goes. I'm your Huckleberry. Yeah. Hmm. 
Okay. <laughs> Alrighty then. When you go up against them and they're just not threatening, it's like, I don't know what to make of that. Ooh, could we gamble on this? I don't think we can. I don't think we... Oh, this is not much better, though. Uh, but we'll keep... Get rid of one of these. See what we can do. You know, this is kind of interesting because we can... If we draw a land, we could Bank Buster... Oh, that's not bad either. Flash in this, make a 2-2, two -two, and then the next turn play another 2-2 two -two and have a Bank Buster. I don't know. Some weird things that may happen later here. I'm still trying to figure out how I feel about Reinforced Ronin. I feel like people are putting it into a lot of deck lists, but, like, constantly spending the mana every turn to try to do stuff with it. Like, here, I'm just going to take it. I mean, don't get me wrong, two mana for four damage is, isn't terrible by any stretch, but, like, at some point, it's like you're, you're exhausting your mana every turn to get what? Okay, there's white mana in there. I'm assuming it's to play... Oh, well. Sure, that's fine. <laughs> like, we'll block that all day. We don't mind. Uh, What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? I almost want to play one of those just because of the lifelink. But that just seems silly. So, let's fire up the weapons. And you can block a 1-1. One, one. And take 7. I'm all right with that. Or take eight, actually. And we can still use Adeline to crew. So sure. So now we don't have to put Adeline at risk to block. We'll just block with the 4-4. Four, four. All right. Apparition to do what? Sure. And we'll crew up. I mean, they could still destroy an artifact or something here. That would be reasonable. I was like, don't tell me you're going to attack with the apparition, because I would totally block. <laughs> In a heartbeat. Would not even question it. However, though, now that you've basically shown me... Okay, so 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You would have 2 mana left to maybe get 10, 11, 12, 13. Mm, mm. I mean, that would be a rough shields down moment. Not going to lie. But are we going to risk it for the biscuit? Because we attack, we're only putting them down to 7. I mean, to, to one. We're dealing seven. I think we're better off just attacking for three here. And if they block either one, whatever. We don't greatly care. Yeah. Their hand's still loaded. Granted, two of those are Ronins, but whatever. All right, there's a gold span dragon. That's real. All right, we go to 10. That does become a real thing. Uh, we did not find our other land. We've been waiting on a fourth land this whole time. Both life gain, uh, life link, and be able to uh, kill things would be very good. Oh, I see what you were going to try. Well, they can still do that anyway. Because uh, that's going to give them a lot of mana with that gold span dragon. Um, yeah, do we just attack with the Thalia? I mean, I guess. Hmm. All right, I feel like we kind of got to. I mean, it sucks that we've been stuck here on three lands this whole time. I think that's the only reason we're going to lose. 
Because if we were able to play that, pump our team, get in a big attack here, that would really matter for this next turn. But now we're kind of screwed. Especially if they have a land here. Okay, they didn't, because they would have been able to play both of those, and that would have sucked. Oh no, they would have been one short. Yeah, reinforce Ronin matters here. Alright, so coming across the top. Can we still win this? Let's really think about this. If we don't block... This is eight, right? So we have two life to play with. We can block the two on the ground. That would leave us still holding an elite spellbinder, a Thalia, and a bank buster. Oh, actually, we need a 3 3 back. Never mind. Yeah, this is totally fine. So we crew this. Unless they have a burn spell or whatever, removal in hand, then if they do, they do. Like, we'll just give it up if they got it. Like,. Just got to accept the consequences. If you got it, you got it. All right. Get a 3-3 back. What do you have with that extra mana? Just a Ronin? Oh, you're discarding it to draw. Yeah, fair. Oh, why did we not find the land? Oh my gosh, how brutal. How savage. I don't even think we can win now, right? Because we have to block the dragon. We can save and block something on the ground. I mean, I guess we can just not die. <laughs> but, but I don't think that necessarily helps us. Though, actually, hold on. Well, no, because we have to leave the Spellbinder black back to block the dragon. I mean, we can attack with this, but then we know they can play at least two things with haste. So we block dragon, block something on the ground, block something on the ground, gain three. But if everything attacks, they don't have... I mean, I guess if they play three attackers at three creatures here, we die. I mean, I guess not totally, because we do get to gain three, so that's something. Oh, they had a gold dragon. Never mind. We're dead. Ah. Why do we get stuck on land? If it wasn't for that, we would have crushed this game. We hit three on turn three and never saw another one. GG's opponent. Ah. Nothing you can do about it. Like, sometimes you just don't get there. Ah. We had so many opportunities. So many. Don't be mad at the player. Be mad at the game, as they say. Don't hate the player, hate the game. All right. We're going to keep this. I just don't know what we're doing with it, but we're keeping it. Hmm. Not a great start for us. That will probably be helpful at some point, having the apparition. So I think the plan is here. Play Thalia. Hope Thalia survives. Unfortunately, Lizard Blades means we're likely going to trade <laughs> something with Thalia, but is what it is. Unless they just want to pay two or three and kill Thalia here, which is... Oh, that is not good. And a rabbit battery. My goodness. Okay. Jeez. They opted to not attack with anything. Huh. Huh. Well, how do we feel about this? Because this creates a different situation. Because it's possible the opponent now wants to maybe load up Lizard Blades. And then attack for four double strike. But if they do, how much do we care? If we play this, then they just load up something to attack for four. And then we're trying to do shenanigans with Adeline after that, I think. Play this, Adeline's only a 2-4. Can't really help us with that situation. Ugh. 
I guess we have to do this and get rid of the lizard blades, which feels kind of bad. But I think that's the only way things don't go terribly sideways at the moment. I mean, we don't like them having aspirant, obviously, but... Well, that's not great for us, is it? Hmm. Hmm. So that would be six. I don't know how I feel about this. Take six, go to 12. I don't know what their last card is. Huh. Could trade. Could kill both of those. We give them a 2-2 two -two back. Just a 2-2 two -two dude. We play Adeline. We won't really be able to block the Historian. Uh, I don't like this at all, but maybe it's what we do. Ah, oh, triple Adeline. That's so bad. <laughs> so bad. This does literally nothing here. Yeah, we're dead. We're dead. I needed to cast probably Adversary and Aspirant there. Saying you're not doing good. Your truck is having issues engaging into drive. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, that sounds rough. Ooh, all right, we're keeping. This hand's actually pretty solid. If we can hit our lands. Uh, that's been our one downside today. And we're playing plenty. We've got like 23 land or something, so don't ever worry about that. Sometimes things just aren't working in your favor. And you got to do what you can do, you know? Um... Well, attacking there doesn't really do anything. Okay, sure. I mean, we could have played Aspirant and attacked, but nah. All right, little 1-1 one -one Duder and a Fireblade. Sure. Silly as it is, it might actually be in our best interest to kill the Fireblade Charger or remove the Fireblade Charger. So then the best blocks the opponent has are actually block here, block here. Though if we do this, then the opponent could block and kill an aspirant. And that would be it. Yeah, I'm going to go with this. I don't think I want to waste this on that. And Thalia has less value in this matchup, I would imagine, anyway. Outside of maybe them casting a burn spell or two, or maybe the uh, Angel Fire Ignition or something. Plus, if we can get the Raptor out of the way, it makes Spellbinder that much better. Okay, I'm, I'm alright with that. Oh, what? Oh, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. That was about to be great. If they were going to do that type of... That was a block I did not see coming. That was about to be awesome. All right. Sunrise Cavalier. Sure. People seem to love this card. I can't bring myself to play it in my list. I know some of y'all are enamored with that card, but it just does not do it for me, y'all. Not even a little bit. All right. So now if we remove... The Raptor... I actually do even want to remove the Raptor. I think we remove... Do we just remove Cavalier? And give the opponent fewer quality blocks still? Sort of want to... Let's see. If we do that, you could block, block, block. This will be a four power. You can use that to kill this. I don't think we do. I think we just get rid of your best thing. Leave you no way to kill the initiate. And then ultimately, the initiate maybe can kill some artifact later. So that's fine. This is literally, I want to kill your initiate. 
<laughs> All right. I'm down. All right. They didn't even. I thought, oh, yeah, because yeah, that didn't die. It would have if I would have stacked that up, I guess. Luminar Casper, sure. Oh, well, now their Fireblade Charger is going to really be able to do something. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a real thing now. And again, we did not find a land. Like, how is this such a persistent issue? Oh, uh, we're getting stuck on three today. Well, good thing to slow that guy down. I mean, I guess no attacks. I mean, I don't know. I guess if we attack, they can kill our flyer. Eh, there's really no need. We'll just wait. I mean, opponent's at 11. If we do get a land, great. Oh, they found another thundering Raiju. Great. All right. Well, we're going to take four to the face. Or three to the face. I guess it's each other creature, so that's fine. I mean, they're not really in a position to attack here anyway. Well, this works out a lot better now. At least we didn't get the land, but we can now remove Fire Blade Charger, which was the problem. So, yeah, we're going to go with that plan. And now we can put a counter here. Makes this into a 4-5. This into a 4. Yeah. And we'll attack with this, this, and this. So basically just leave the opponent no great blocks. Uh, yes, you can keep that Raiju. <laughs> we are not concerned about that. Okay. Oh, I guess I could have got away attacking with everything. Well, I didn't really know how they were going to block, though. Yeah, sure. We know it's in your hand. I mean, yeah, we just take five. Whatever. <laughs> like... Yeah, it doesn't matter. We're going to keep this. I am in favor of this setup. All right. Open in here. Ooh, not who you want to see in times like this. You know what, though? We have four lands, so that's an improvement. I'll take it. Uh, if this is Tovalar, this could be the start of something not great. Uh, all right. I'm your Huckleberry. Please don't wreck me. Yep, there's a snakeskin veil. That's all right, though. We can accept that. I think here I'm going to lead with Sun Gold Sentinel. Not that that does much there, and we'll just attack. And then, depending on what we draw, we could play Bank Buster and something, or potentially just play Wandering Emperor, and then take off from there. But we'll see. Okay, we can play Bank Buster and this. And uh, we'll attack. Why not? In the turn. Now, if the opponent has some other burn spell or another snakeskin veil, whatever, we're just losing Bank Buster here. <laughs> like, just straight up letting you know we're we're losing this Bank Buster. It it has a job to do. It understands its assignment. All right. How bad is it? All right, we got to keep it so far. All right, Arsonus. Okay, well, that's all that happened? That's not nearly as bad as it could have been. I almost feel like we cheated there. All right, now there's a real question. What do we do here? We know the opponent has one, what we can effectively say is a dead card, because it's not threatening to us. Only two real things. 
realistically have access to five lands, maybe if they draw one. So I think we just attack with Bank Buster here. Because our other plan is just going to be play Wandering Emperor, right? So, yeah. I mean, we're still at 17 for the time being, so we're not really being threatened at the moment. All right. Could be, but could be another arsonist here, which would be kind of bad, really. Now that I'm thinking about it. Because I'd be able to take out a blocker. Okay, Arlen makes two dudes. That's not inconsequential here. Feel your hair standing on end? Run wild. Run free. All right. So we take some damage. I think... I mean, we're definitely going to play this. I think we just block up and kill that. Anyone who harms my people must contend with me. I mean, because if we give one of them a plus, it doesn't do anything. I mean, we could just kill it. That's the other option. If we kill it, eh, what's better? If we kill it, we gain two life, get to keep our two duders. But then we could attack everything into Arlen. Ugh. You know what? I'm just going to... I'm just going to kill it. Come on. Oh, I have to go back to the browser. There we go. This is what you get for hurting my people. Nice. This is actually really good. Uh, we will get rid of that. That's way more concerning. Uh, we will plus one on our Sun Gold Sentinel. Strike fast and strike hard. And then I think, actually, we can now activate this and just attack this into Arlen. Uh, give it protection from green, or can't be blocked by green things. All right, so this is going to take out Arlen. These two are going after the opponent. I actually don't care that I will lose the uh, Wandering Emperor here. Because if they attack us, whatever. Yeah, that's fine. So now we're not even really threatened that way. Unless they get another hasty thing here, but that's fine. If so, we've got a huge attack next turn. Well, they didn't draw anything there, so we're mostly okay. They could spend treasure here to cast a thing... But I think we're okay with that action, too. Oh, also excellent. Uh, do we make a creature? Yeah, because a creature's vigilance. Opponent's only at 12. You block this, take 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... And we still have blockers. Yeah, there's really no need to even, honestly. We'll just make a samurai. And then we'll attack with all these. I think the game's basically over at this point. Yep. I mean, could have attacked with this too, but we wouldn't have killed them. They'd be at one. If they can survive here, then whatever. Yeah, I don't think they have anything else here. Yep, that's it. Uh... Hmm. Yeah, we're going to go first with this. We're kind of hoping to draw a two mana thing. Might have too much land this time, but we'll see. If we can top deck a two mana thing, I'd feel a lot better here. At least give us the opportunity to try to curve out here. Especially with the Wandering Emperor already in hand. That'd be great. That is the one to draw if we're going to draw one against a red deck or a thing with red mana. 
Our hotshot mechanic's about to die, by the way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's no surprise. No surprise. Oh, Thalia. Great card in this scenario. Is Thalia dead too? Nope, opponent just gave up. We'll take it. <laughs> yeah, we're keeping this. I mean, Luminar Castman probably just dies on sight, but whatever. We're still going to try. Oh, where were you last time? You make me sad. Though, it does mean we actually have a bank buster we could block with next turn, so that's actually not terrible. I'm kind of into that plan. Okay. Good news is, they did not grow their champion here. Which is valuable information. So let's do this. And let's do this. And this possibly holds the opponent off for a turn. Also means if we get another land, we could attack with one bank buster, block with the other one. And then that's super exciting. Then we end up in a situation where we can also start drawing from our bank busters. So, hopefully this works out. We'll see. But this is one of the main reasons it's in here. The Sun Gold Sentinel over some other cards. Because we do want to be able to uh, crew bank busters regularly. Alright. This is the good news. Opponent played a zombie deck with a turn one champion. And has just been trying to deal with our stuff. Uh, since then. So we, we like where this is going. We are not mad about these things. Alright. Um, do we attack with the bank buster here? Like, we kind of are turning into the aggro here. We, we're kind of, kind of are the beatdown. Um, trying to think what happens next turn. If we, we could play a Bank Buster, then we could possibly attack with those two. Or we could just play Adeline and attack. Then have Adeline back to crew a Bank Buster. Alright, I'll gamble. I mean, mostly because here's my logic. Anything they play next turn, it probably costs three. If it does, then they're only attacking us for two or saving two to block. But then they have to block whatever we're attacking with. Yeah, they're dead. Hmm. Yeah, I can't see any way we're throwing this back. If we just don't draw land, we don't draw land. Like, we just gotta eat it if we don't. Like, at some point, you just toss your hands up and say, well, we hope we get there. Bad part is... Well, actually, this is not bad. With these two, if they're playing the green-white enchantment stack we're actually not bad off here i should have played the cave first i didn't realize i hadn't i actually for some reason in my head processed this as being an iganjo and it actually wasn't so that's bad okay losing the mechanic believe it or not is a little bit of a problem and it's a big deal we didn't play the cave because now i'm stuck with this in hand so if i don't get another land i'm not going to be able to play the emperor on turn four that being said there's a good chance we're going to be playing these back to back so you know whatever's whatever but um, all right, we're going to do this and remove it, uh, just because if they do get rid of our apparition, they don't get a real creature back. They just get a token. Any chance we can get an untapped land next turn deck? I would really appreciate it. Well, that's not awful. At least we can do something here. Get in with the bank buster. If they want to kill our bank buster with a... Well, if they had a Besager, they would have just played it. Because they've missed land drops here. Alright. Kami. We can get rid of a Kami of Transients. Question is, I don't even know if we want to here, though. I'm really like, do we care to? <laughs> like... I mean, I guess we do. I mean, what else is the opponent doing? We, we might as well. I was going to play the Emperor, but whatever. And then we tap these two. Yeah. Uh, hmm. 
Yeah, this is reasonable. The, the, the only bad part about hands like this is, like, if you aren't playing against something with creatures, these are really bad. I, I say that. A, appar apparition isn't the worst thing. It That could be something, but... Oh. That initiate showing up when it did is not great. All right, let's see what's up here. Black whites. So we're doing this. Um, good news is at least we got the wandering emperor here. Does this get to live? Eh, there was a stop there. I'm assuming it's not. No, oh, vanishing verse. I guess it's good to get that out the way, all things considered. I think we want to just play a brutal Cathar here. Because if the opponent plays nothing, there's a chance that this becomes knight and we get a 3-3. Three, three. I mean, we won't get to play the Wandering Emperor because we have a cave in hand. It's the only reason I considered playing this first. But... Alright. Now we have a decision to make. Because if we play Thalia and this, it could potentially become day. This flips. Then they would have one, two, one. They would be able to... They don't be able to meet hook for one, though. Right? Because you'd have to pay two, and then one for Thalia, then one for the meat hook. If I do that, and they kill Thalia here, then they get to meat hook for two and kill everything, and that kind of sucks. Hmm. Does that mean they don't have removal here? Ah... All right, I'm gambling. I mean, they could have whatever that other thing is that destroy everything three or less, which is possible. Oh, well, great. We have a thing for that. All right. Though Meat Hook for two does start to become a real thing. If we pass, we just get to exile that. Let's check out things up top first. Don't have two Meat Hooks, please. Mm, Thalia is not great either. Or Kaya is not the thing we want to see either. Blood on the Snow. Can we deal with that over two turns? Blood on the Snow is scarier than Kaya here, though. And Kaya costs an extra one right now anyway. So, sure. No attacks. Now we can at least attack with flying. Plus, we have this. We can exile Edgar. So there's, there's some things in our favor here now. But now, well, hmm. Now they'll get to draw cards and make a treasure. So we have to start thinking about that too. Okay. I think here's our plan. Oh, crap. <laughs> We're under our own Thalia. Um... What is the best plan of action here? I'm just trying to think about, like, what are we concerned about? Really, it's just meat hook for two at this point that we give a damn about, so sure. I mean, they'll obviously get rid of Edgar here, get cards, because that's what I would do. Yep. Makes a lot of sense. And now they have piles of treasure. All right, they either got it or they don't. If they do, we're in rough shape. If not, we're probably all right. Okay, Vanishing Burst keeps them alive for the time being. Uh, or not. They block here, gain one, they go to eight, they take three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Or we just attack with everything, destroy that. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, y'all, the upgrades were great. <laughs> I mean, there's really nothing else to say about it. Like, what, if, what, did we only lose two games in there? The two where we got stuck at three lands, I think, were all I lost with this? Maybe? 
either way, like, game's really good. We overcame some tough situations, but our our new cards we added in were all good. We, we only didn't use, like, Ganjo as an actual removal spell, but I don't hate that they're in there. They actually didn't trip us up at all. They were totally fine on our mana, so I felt pretty good about that. Not really much I would change, honestly. Like I said, the only thing I might consider is another Thalia one less bank buster and that's about it otherwise everything worked out great so if you wanted simple upgrades to mono white aggro i would totally go with this build because it answered so many issues and problems i think we could have run into so yeah big thumbs up on this one now for today's card spotlight we're going to talk about brimaz king of arescos this card's actually pretty baller this is one i think a lot of people never got to see because i think it was from born in the gods but it's a 3-4 for 3, which is already really good. And it has Vigilance, so that's a nice bonus. And then when you attack or block, you get a 1-1 one, one creature that also has Vigilance. And if you're attacking, I believe it also comes into play attacking. So this is like, I guess like Adeline, but you don't need anything else to attack. It just gets the job done on its own. And anytime you block with it, you get an additional thing, which is super fantastic. And what people don't know about this card is it's like $14 like it's a real value like and what's crazy is a lot of times this isn't something people even think about they see and go ah it's like a theme deck card it goes into like cat decks or whatever and people are putting in specialized like commander stuff doesn't matter it hasn't been reprinted it's a mythic and people like it so yeah if you have any of these there you go another one that's just worth some money that's probably just hanging around in your collection somewhere now, don't forget, if you want today's deck list, it will be down in the description below, like always, with links to our Facebook gaming page, our Twitch streams, and our Discords, which we stream on throughout the week. So if you want to come be part of stuff, ask questions, give tips, have suggestions, whatever, get deck help. Stop by our Discord. The Brood is very helpful, and we can check out your deck list and give you some help, especially right now in the new Kamigawa standard. And if you would be so kind, because some of you keep asking, do I have a Patreon? I do not, but I have memberships right here on YouTube. So for as little as 99 cents, you can support the channel. I also have multiple levels, so you can check those out and see if there's anything there that tickles your fancy. And your support is always greatly appreciated because it helps so very much. But even if you can't do that, please remember to like the video because that's been helping a lot. A bunch of y'all have been doing that the last few days and I'm really appreciative. And remember to share it with anybody who may need it because the shares and the likes go a long way. But if you'd be so kind, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and remember to choose all notifications so you don't miss anything I send out, including notifications like today, where you got alerted that there was free gold upgrades in Arena, because I send those out too. But that's all I have for you for now. We'll see you next time.